Hey everybody, welcome to episode four of the Fused Relativity Podcast. Skulls and Arms here. We got D Infinity X, Kirk Buckout. Uh, we added some music and an animation this week. Hope hopefully everybody liked it. Kirk, good not job on the name change. Yeah, I fig I I was Kirk Buckout. No, I'm the Kirk Buckout. So I'm totally anonymous. Nobody will know who I am. So I figured that's that's what we're going for. Well, I wasn't sure if you would actually do it, so I guess you did something. But, hey, I figured out how to do something on the computer, so that is enough of a task for me. So you're welcome. <laughs> Only three or four weeks into a technology podcast. Good for you, Kirk. Yeah, I thought so. It's a pretty yeah. good step. John, how are you doing this evening? Ah, uh, glad that I'm done with all that animation stuff. <laughs> That was cool animation, by the way. A little three D space rocket flying into the uh, the universe. That was uh, that was cool. I really appreciated it. Yeah, it's it's going to get better. This was the first pass. I just kind of ran out of time and wanted to get it done. So this is where it stands for now. It will only get better, hopefully. And I would like to point out, just well, because we can. The intro music was a collaboration between myself and Kirk, uh, written and recorded by us. I definitely did not help. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. As my, my grandpa's old joke, John, he doesn't know how to play an instrument. He knows how to play the radio. That's all the, the, he you're, knows how to play. You're not wrong. I tried the guitar. <laughs> I think I got what? Chris, two songs that I was able to do, and that was that <laughs> for everybody. But also, I've been playing for like twenty years, and I was able to success successfully make like a you know thirty second intro music. So it's not saying much for me either. <laughs> right. Well, you did have to bow out. Your your fingers were your fingers were hurting. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, if if anybody here knows anything about the guitar, man, when you get into that, it can really cut into your fingers if you've been playing or not playing for a while. Right. I was going to say, didn't you just say 20 years? Shouldn't you have developed some calluses or something by now? I, de I develop them, and then I lose them, and then I develop them, and then... You know what? Sometimes I have bitch hands. What can I say? <laughs> it's all the exfoliating and moisturizing you're doing. You have to stop that. Enough with the just no more manicures and just play guitar. You'll be fine. But it's, it's up to you. Hey, I wanted to take your advice and not have John's hands if I had to put them on webcam. <laughs> <laughs> that was a nice callback. I did. Yes. John, is, was he, his hands were on screen last week and I... I said they were not hand model worthy, and he hasn't been right since. So, well, of all the things that uh, we did this week, John, you put a lot of stuff together the animations and the uh, putting up the music. Uh, that took a lot of ingenuity. Kirk, you putting up your name, not so much ingenuity, uh, but I am happy that you changed it. Leading into that, I want to talk about the Ingenuity helicopter this week that they are putting on Mars, or, well, put on Mars already, but uh, what an exciting piece of equipment that we're about to see. You're definitely not wrong there. But just great trans, I mean, Ingenuity, Ingenuity. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm... I'm more blown away by that than the technology of Mars, to be honest with you. But we can talk about that. I was going to say, yeah, he, he let off with the ingenuity of the thing and then went on to Kirk. And I was like, he's going to do it again. You know what? Hey, it worked. It worked. I'm, I, I'm trying to get better every week for our, our listeners so that they don't have to um, suffer as much. How about that? Fair enough. So Right. So we we're, we're, we went to Mars and uh, after after we're, we go, we're on Mars, then we're going to Venus to pick up some chicks, right? That's the next plan. <laughs> well, uh, even the chicks on Venus don't want to date you, Kirk. So um, 
I was gonna tell you that, but eh. so you've already <laughs> talked to the other planets, and then it's already a no go. Well, they sent some code and radio signals, and um, they all said, "Don't bring Kirk." <laughs> All right, Chris. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> anyway, so let's talk about this helicopter because we're talking about an unmanned flight on another planet by a helicopter that took six years to make an engineer, all because Mars has 1% of the Earth's atmosphere and they really don't know what's going to happen as far as whether it'll fly or not. They could only recreate the uh, the c conditions of Mars so much here on Earth, and their best guess is as good as ours. Well, theirs is much more educated than ours, but... They, they, I they, hope so. I yeah. hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, considering the helicopter cost $80 million to make, I think we better hope so. It's eighty-one million with a CD player, so that's even more. That's that's a high end. Uh, I hope they picked a good song. <laughs> oh, who put Creed in the CD player? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that's not going to cut it. Well, and you said that one of the one of the things they're having problems with testing the equipment is just the the frigid conditions on Mars. Was that that's right? That's one of the things they were having problems with. It was just so cold; it was freezing the uh, electronical or the electronics. Is that right? Kind of. Mars is a very cold place at night, especially. It gets down to like minus one hundred and thirty degrees, which our electronics can't handle. Like it would just basically fry the components. So they actually have to put a heater inside of the uh, helicopter so that they can keep it warm at night. And one of the other things is they're relying on the solar array that they're using to charge the helicopter to not crap out so that they can keep the electronics overnight. It's a pretty daunting process because if one, thing's go one thing goes wrong, pretty much the whole thing is scrap. Well, and that's... Part of the reason um, I'm going to tag on to this, but the helicopter itself is limited in uh, flight time. And part of that is because they have to preserve the battery that the solar panels um, or is able to charge for the overnight to keep the, the helicopter warm. Right. And they're using just regular lithium ion batteries, the same kind of batteries that we use on a lot of our things now. So they don't have like crazy fancy batteries that they're using that are gonna do any better than what we see here on earth well not entirely well not on the helicopter i was gonna say the the rover itself has a crazy fancy battery right this, how cold was the conditions what was the uh, minus Mars? minus 130 degrees okay well i i heard they were trying to recreate those frigid conditions by putting the equipment in the uh, bed of a married couple, is what I heard. <laughs> I mean, oh, they've been married sad. for 15, 20 years. Well, you know, <laughs> you do what you gotta do, I suppose. Uh, so the helicopter, uh, an interesting piece that I found was, uh, they're gonna test the rotors on this, and it has two separate rotors and they are stacked uh to spin opposite directions which i found kind of generates more lift i didn't really read into why but it gel ge blah, 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 generates more lift without having to do anything except spin opposite directions and because of the thin atmosphere the same helicopter on earth would have about a 500 rpm spin rate Whereas on Mars, they have to spin it at 2,400 to 2,500 RPMs, which is about five times faster. So you can kind of see what the, you know, um, obstacles are as far as flying on a very thin atmosphere. Well, you were talking about the, the dual rotor on top. Do you remember the helicopters, the really cheap ones that uh, 
used to be around. I mean, they're still around, but the ones that you could used to fly as just a toy. Are you speaking towards the ones you like shoot in the air or like? Well, no, controlled? the ones that are actually like remote controlled. Okay. Yeah. Um, the reason those were, and I, I'm speculating here a bit, but the reason that those were, um, so pop well not popular but easy to do is because of the dual rotor on top it's kind of a uh mix of when you spin the rotors in opposite directions you don't need that tail rotor to control because the rotors themselves can control the um the pitch and yaw and all that of the helicopter well that's interesting i guess it makes sense i never even look to see that the helicopter doesn't have a rotor on it. Yeah, I'm almost positive it doesn't. And, I mean, yeah, I'm trying to think if those were longer than 10 years ago or... I just remember a lot of the, the cheap helicopters I used to get to mess around with were the dual rotor on top. Um, because just by... Because they're counter-rotating against each other, you have control over the pitch and yaw of the helicopter. There's um, the Chinook is a good example. I believe it's uh, uh, rotors spin in opposite directions. Well, I'm I'm only hoping that this helicopter flies better than any drone I've ever tried to fly because that's going to be a quick eighty million dollars. Yeah, I I would second that. <laughs> I'm hoping the person holding the remote is. They've practiced a little more. Come on. I mean, if it's $80 million, they're not just going to go, hey, let's give it to Chris. Well, <laughs> here's a bit of trivia for you, Kirk. Um, All right. The helicopter itself, and Chris, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it has a flight time of 30 seconds. Um, I believe the communication delay between Earth and Mars is about 20 minutes. So I... It would be a, a bit of a challenging task to control it from Earth. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's not it's actually flying by itself, so there is nobody controlling it, which means it's probably gonna do better. Artificial intelligence probably is more intelligent than human intelligence. I would I would go with that. Well, when it comes to flying things in the air, I think, you know, that's how yeah. it goes. I mean, that's how the SpaceX lends their stuff. It's all uh, pre-programmed computers. And uh, the helicopter is going to, I think they're going to start like um, actual testing of, uh, of the unit on like April 8th is when they're like, that's the earliest that they're going to try and put this thing in the air and for its first flight it's only expected to reach a height of three feet they're not going to go any further than that and one of their things that they talk about is everything that they do with this unit is going to go very slow so it's going to take a total of six days six and a half days earth time for them to even get this thing on the ground and ready to go. Well, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's already on the ground. If not, I know the the cover was deployed and it was being lowered. Yeah, the cover the cover was deployed and then it took and they may have depending on when the cover went down, they may have this thing kind of going that way at this point, but they said it was going to take 4 days for them to at least get it on the ground. So I guess it could yeah. be on the ground. I was going to say, think. I think, when did they uh, say the cover was off? Like Monday? Monday or I think Tuesday? Was, I think it was Monday. So then, yeah, by now they probably have it at least uh, sitting on the ground. But it took three days just for them to get the thing turned vertical and all the legs to come down. It, so this helicopter, it was it was in in the rover or connected to the rover? And, yeah. And, or Okay. It was under the, yeah. it was on its belly, a bit, basically. Yeah, and it had a carbon fiber shield over top of it. And so the rover had to drop the shield. And then this thing kind of had to fold out from underneath of it. And it, it did it in 
sections so that it wasn't just plopping down all at once. It had a whole system it had to go through. And then they've got to download the uh, information from the rover. And then the rover actually has to drop it on the ground and book it out of there so that the helicopter can get full sunlight to be able to charge its batteries. Interesting. I, it, I, I read and it says in the late spring, China is going to have a rover on Mars too. Like that's coming. So, so the space race actually happened. And I don't know, to me, I just think it would be funny if when the China rover landed, it landed right on top of our rover and crushed it. And just, we would be so upset. And they're like, you had to do that on purpose. You have the whole planet and you landed. There's no way that was an accident. I think I'd be more impressed that they I, I was going to say, if they were able to pull that off, that would be a ridiculously hard feat to do. Would that be just a horrible accident? Yeah, they're like, Come on, there's no way that was coincidence. No, 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 we didn't plan that at all. I think you did. There's no, I mean, come on. You have all these well, parking spaces and you went right on top of ours. Like when you park in a parking lot in the back and then you come out and there's like three cars right around you. You're like, come on. <laughs> I did this to stay away from you numbskulls. And then you're right next to me. Yeah. But the, uh, the cool part is, is we're going to see within the next week, week and a half, whether unmanned flight and possibly manned flight are possible on Mars. That's kind of a huge step for what we're trying to do as far as taking a crewed mission out there, just knowing what we're getting into when we land. I'm, I'm not even going to call you out on the manned Mars because all of the Me Too people are going to, why does it have to be manned? Don't get us canceled, Kirk. <laughs> All right. Let's just, hopefully, I'm the only one who noticed that. We'll just keep continue and move on. But, you know, if somebody's saying, oh, that's got to be a man. Huh? And then, John, I don't – did you see the uh, dragonfly that they're planning on flying to uh, Titan after this one is done? I haven't seen – I know there's a couple different – or when I was – when they had announced the Titan, there was a few different designs that they were going to go for or try to go for. I think they're using this as kind of a model to see, you know, what works and what doesn't work. And then uh, they think Titan is probably our best chance of finding something relatively habitable as far as life is concerned. And they're going to make a bigger, better version of this helicopter to go to Titan and give us a better idea of what's happening. Yeah, that would actually be the the moons outside of, you know, our little space are the ones that I am really interested in cuz outside of a few close-up pictures, we we really haven't explored anything past well, Mars. I don't even think there's been a uh I could be wrong, but I don't think there's even been anything to uh, Mars's moon. I'm, I'm trying Kirk, to Titan is one of Saturn's moons, just in case you were wondering. Oh, okay. That helps out. Well, and John, let me ask you, I heard when, uh, when we want the Mars rover to come back, I heard that the technicians are just going to uh, announce into space, red rover, red rover, come back <laughs> on over. Is that factually accurate? Probably not, but it would be hilarious. <laughs> See, the problem is, is all the Martians would hear that too, and they'd be like, oh, okay, here we go. Boom, well, and then we're being invaded. See, now you made me think of the the tweet. I can't remember. Um, did you ever see the last tw or communication from uh, one of the Mars rovers that was up there? think so huh no it was um hold on i'm, I'm looking it up uh, save ferris 
Yeah, it, it said something about... Oh, I'm going to misremember it. My battery is low and it's getting dark. Oh, that's what one of the rovers sent? Yeah, it was its last uh, transmission. That's kind of like heavy. Just a, just a little bit. Smart enough to know that its battery is going, but it's not smart enough to find a charger. <laughs> well, so the problem was, and the problem with, eventual problem with all rovers that had solar paneled, or solar panels and didn't have the um, the miniature nuclear reactors was after dust storm and dust storm and dust storm the panels just get way too dusty and it just can't get clean and eventually just not able to charge itself. So you're saying we spent eighty billion dollars to get this thing up here and no one thought of a dustbuster? Oh, I think they did. I think it just became less and less effective as the the years went on. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Dust accumulates. You can't you can't fault them for that. Maybe just like a windshield wiper might work. I mean, yeah, isn't I'm... there a homeless guy with a squeegee? I mean, you give him a dollar. <laughs> uh, John, one thing I did uh, read while reading about this Ingenuity helicopter, which I think. Uh, ties into what you like to talk about with SpaceX and Relativity Space is have you heard of the MOXIE system they have going on the actual Perseverance rover? I don't think I ha if I do I don't it's not ringing a bell right this second. Well the MOXIE system is another test that they're going to do with the Perseverance after the helicopter and it's actually a oxygen scrubber and Mars atmosphere is mostly consistent of carbon dioxide. And so the Rover is actually going to scrub that carbon dioxide with this MOXIE system to try and break it down into liquid oxygen. Yeah. Which if that's successful, then it solves one of the issues of us going there. Correct. And I thought that was pretty interesting just based off of the fact that that's kind of what we're stepping towards with all these flights to Mars, it just kind of solidifies that, hey, we're, we're actually, that's where we're moving. Uh, like uh, Musk's goal of sending a thousand starships to Mars at once. When is he planning on doing that? Uh, I, what did he say? I think he wants to get something to Mars by 2024, and I don't know when the next window is but his goal is to send as many starships as possible when he the colony starts to maximize the chance of success so if they can make a thousand starships they want to send a thousand starships i think my biggest question with it is now that i've seen that the temperature gets to be that fucking cold how do you live up there? It sounds terrible. Underground. Well, if there's going to be that many starships, is the reason they sent the helicopter to give traffic reports? Is that? <laughs> I mean, it seems like they're way ahead of the. You know what I mean? Like, oh my yeah. god, let's see it. The, <laughs> your, your commute is going to be a little. It's going to be forty minutes longer. It's going to be totally clogged up there, and uh, so you might want to leave early. I mean, you <laughs> probably. And uh, I did see a cool picture of a Martian dust storm. So that's a thing. You know, helicopter, I feel like that might create a few more of them, too. Or knock up some dust. So, <laughs> so a, a Martian, when he said a Martian dust storm, I thought like a Martian was, but it was just a dust storm on Mars. Yes. Okay. I was picturing like a Martian running around, like creating a, I don't know, like a whirlwind and creating it himself. You've been watching a little too much Tasmanian Devil, Kirk. It could be. That could. You know what? I'm not going to deny that. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> just uh, one of those things that that I'm looking forward to is seeing what these pictures are that come back from the helicopter because it does have cameras 
And so if it flies and does what it's supposed to do, we're going to get some aerial footage from this thing. And that should be pretty uh, fascinating to see. But I heard NASA added, they added 25 cameras to this $3 billion mission. So it's the same as new parents. <laughs> <laughs> 24 kirk all right you are you are you're keeping it together all right it's fine you haven't gone overboard yet you only have two dozen cameras i am not a helicopter parent but a uh no no <laughs> <laughs> bad pun <laughs> yeah like, like a christmas <laughs> no just not <laughs> Well, well will, uh, uh, yeah, well, you know what? It's nice. It's amazing how far they've gone on Mars. I mean, these guys, they really, they got their eye on the ball. They're really doing good. They're really killing it. You know, Kirk, speaking of balls. <laughs> nothing. All right. Where, well, where, <laughs> you, where, I said, where, I, where are you going? Where are you going with this? <laughs> I think we should go over to Kirk's corner and see what's happening over there this week. All right, let's. Holy Lord, it looks like there is. Uh, that looks like a thing of bleach. Is that a thing of bleach on the table? Like you're trying to. That, that doesn't seem. That's not nice. Um, it's supposed to be milk. Oh, is it milk? Okay. Okay. That's nicer. Um, you know, I'm not lactose intolerant. I'm lactose tolerant. I enjoy it. Um, and was that BAMF? B A M F. That that may be a a little too new school for you. It, it's a reference to your yeah. What is the yes? What is the, I, I heard is Chris sunny, kind of sunny boy. say it. Yeah. I I I said Bamf is the universal term for badass motherfucker. Ah, okay. So just the brief. Okay, so that's that's what the kids are saying. Like you know, when a CD drops instead of it's released. It's all right. You got your new fangled. I like the shadow too. Is that new? I haven't noticed that before. No, the shadow's been there. Okay. And is that a little? That's a hammer. What is that down? And that's a cat holding a hammer. Well, so far you and my wife are the only two to see it as a cat right off the bat. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that's a Tinker Cat. Ah, a Tinker Cat. Which I still honestly don't know what the hell that is. It's just, it's, it's, uh, you know what? I'm 41. I'm too old to know. That's just, I'm not going to, that's just knowledge. Even if I wanted to, my brain would actively reject it. Probably. Well, it, well, it basically, in Kirk's Corner, we were talking, it basically, it, we we're talking about it's, you know, March Madness, and we had the, uh, the the least scary team names and the most inappropriate. So ba it's just basically we boil it down to the worst sports team names. So um, totally original. It's we're gonna call it uh, March Badness. So complete it has <laughs> nothing. We've if you're wondering where we got that idea, completely made it up. It has nothing <laughs> to do with anything. But now, so basically we have Sweet Sixteen for March Badness. And if I understand this correctly. And I'm not sure if I understand the technology correctly. What's going to happen is the computer will actually pick the team, the, pick the winners. Somehow we've got this gambling system set up and it, we've got the teams lined up and the computer will actually figure out who will actually win the March badness championship. Is that, is that right, John? Yes, that is correct. That is correct. Okay. So basically, okay. So, uh, let's see what we got here. It looks like the okay. So if I just basically go down uh, the 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 uh, who's playing who, and uh, then if uh, you can then tell me who won that that game. So it looks like the was it the top seed right there? The number one seed is the uh, ooh the telemarketers. Ooh, they're oh everybody hates. they nobody likes the telemarketers, and they are battling the uh, identity stealers. We're not like the Pittsburgh Steelers, totally different. So with the magic of technology, can we see who won between the telemarketers and the identity stealers? Holy Lord, okay, that, that's a telemarketer. A lot of people lost money on that one. All the gamblers, no, actually that was, 
the number one seed. So that's what should have happened. Okay. <laughs> so not an upset there. Nothing too bad. Okay. So the next one we have the, uh, the we have the Charlotte Charters. Who, holy lord, nobody likes them. And then we got the uh, they're battling the Wyoming white supremacists. So in that battle, hit me. Who won? Ah, oh. oh, the white supremacists. That's. We can't really be excited about that one. Yeah, <laughs> that's ne- that's never enjoyable when the white supremacists win. So let's hopefully they'll they'll lose the next round. Um, so the next one we got who we got we got the oh the main tight parking spaces which I that is Chris's favorite team. That Come is, on, that tight is, parking that's spaces. That's his alma mater. He that's where he graduated from. And then they are battling the New England Elevator Fighters. That is a tough matchup right there. I mean, I think the Elevator Fighters have it, but. What do I know? Let's see who won that battle. Show it to me, John. Da, the New England elevator f- with the upset beating them. Ah, Chris, that's got to be oh. difficult for you. That's got to be painful. I just lost a lot of money. He just lost a lot. Of- <laughs> I'm gonna have to get a second job. Oh my god, I gotta. I mortgage my house. Um. Okay. So then we got next one. We got the ah the Philadelphia filibusters. They are topical. They are in the news. A lot of people talk about them. Versus the North Dakota Drunk Santas, who are my personal favorites. Who doesn't like Drunk Santa? Let's see who won that battle. The Drunk yep. Santa. All right. Yes, of course. They have the ho- They had the holiday spirit, is what they did. They they overcame. They okay. just couldn't hold on long enough. Those filibusters. <laughs> they just kept going on and on and on and on. You got it. Okay, so the next one, we got the, uh, I can't read the numbers. They're too small. I, my eyes are bad. Three. So we got the Missis- three. Okay, we got the, the third seed, the three-seeded Mississippi bad spellers, which in that state, that's just going to be difficult. And then we got the uh, unexpected callers, which is frightening. Anybody I know, if you don't know if somebody's going to call, it does frighten you. So who who won that battle here? Oh. Ah, the unexpected callers. I did not see that coming. So, okay, so we're getting down. We're uh, we're see this is we're finalizing the elite eight. So we're going from the Sweet Sixteen to Elite Eight, and we'll walk you all to the final four to the championship. The next one is the uh, what is this? The, uh, I was gonna oh, say the, your your home state going against each other. That's the the Scottsdale wrong phone numbers, which that's just ah. Oh. That is horrible. Versus the Tulsa hovering salespeople. Those are annoying. Nobody likes those guys. So between the phone numbers and the salespeople, who prevailed? Scottsdale wrong phone numbers. I'm from Arizona. I can support that. A little, little local pride. Going up for Scottsdale. There's uh, so many upsets this week. Wow. Yeah, who would have thunk it? You know what? That's why it's March Badness. That's what <laughs> happens in March Badness. You never I mean, know. In fairness, <laughs> this is for the bad the worst name there this is right this is uh, the winner technically is not a winner because <laughs> you're winning the worst so it's kind of a slap in the face it's kind of a you know a double-edged sword here so the next uh we got the the, the missouri muddy shoes going against the san diego egos personally i'm hoping for the san diego egos just I, because egos are fun to say and i do They're like delicious. that name come on egos yeah, yeah, all right. Yes, all right. A goes in the lead eight. Perfect. Okay, so rounding out the lead eight, uh, we got the Saratoga shitbags versus the what is it? The uh, <laughs> oh, I, was it Anchorage, Anchorage process servers? Anchorage processor. Uh, yes, the people that show up and then met you, then you realize that someone is suing you. The process servers versus the shitbags, which are technically very similar. So let's see who prevailed in that one. Ah, Saratoga shitbags. That's a fun one to say. All right. <laughs> okay, so now we got the Elite Eight. Now this is going to boil down to the uh, the uh, final four. So we got the we got the telemarketers versus the white supremacists. I'm really hoping. I never thought I'd say this. I'm pulling for the telemarketers. Yeah. <laughs> so come on, telemarketers. No. no. Oh. Ah! Look, okay, John, your computer program is racist. Can I just say that? The one you chose to pick who wins is clearly racist. Okay, but let's ignore that. Uh, so how about the New England Elevator Fighters versus the Drunk Santas? That is a that is a hot matchup right there. And you also probably know Drunk Santa's going to be farting. Oh, oh and Drunk Santa's won. 
Drunk Santa's prevailed, totally blowing out the elevator farters. All uh, right. How about the, okay. So now the, okay. We got the Scottsdale wrong phone numbers uh, versus the uh, unexpected callers. I'm, I come on Scottsdale, Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm rooting for Arizona. Let's do oh. it. No. Oh, Arizona's <laughs> A little local pride. That's okay. You know what? That's all right. We still got the San Diego Egos, yeah, who that's... I believe there's no way they're going to lose to the shitbags. This is this is a done deal. It's got to be Egos. Yes. yes. Told yep. you. What did I say? Who who knows March Badness more than me? Nobody. Um... <laughs> okay. So now we're down to the final four. This is where it gets really exciting. Everybody's. A... All these teams are the top of the top. There's no bad teams here. So between the drunk Santas and the white supremacists, come on, let's prove to me you're... Oh. Man! <laughs> that's, that's just not right. John, if the, don't come... Okay, all right. The white supremacists in an upset beat the drunk Santas, which is horrible. Uh, so, but let's see who the, the white supremacists are going to play. Are they going to be play the unsuspect colors? Or are they going to go against the San Diego Egos? Oh. Boo! San Diego. Oh, come on. The, San Diego Egos is a clear fan favorite. This is I would for agree. all the marbles. I, please, <laughs> come on, San Diego. Don't make this awkward. Let's have, come on, show me the Egos. Yes. Yay! All right. Ooh, that was that could have man, yeah. we could have got me too all over the place for that. If <laughs> if we if our podcast calls uh, white supremacist champions, uh, I, I think we'd officially be canceled. Which yeah. I don't know how they do that for podcasts, but they would figure it out. Probably well, hey, uh, a, a ten seed made it all the way to the championship. How about that Cinderella story? Look at the San Diego Egos covered in syrupy goodness. I I, I can see what's going to be new in Kirk's Corner next week. Uh, I'm glad you can because I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you you let me know later. But hey, I believe I believe that was. Uh, that was March Madness, everybody. I hope you know what. If you want to watch March Madness, you could do that, but it's probably going to be a letdown compared to March Madness. I'm going to be honest. In comparison, it's going to going to pale. It's not going to be as fun. All right. Hey, well, thank you so much for that, Kirk. We uh, definitely needed to see that. It was a cliffhanger with the white supremacists there towards the end, but the better team prevailed, and now. Let's go over to John and see what he's got to talk about this week. All right. So I've got to preface this with, I'm going to switch back to the screen real quick. Um, so I'm going to be talking about uh, photogrammetry. And that is the process of taking a bunch of pictures of a single object and turning it into a 3D model. Now, the reason I want to preface this is because... Um, I had been trying to take pictures of shoes and was having absolutely no luck. And just by chance, uh, my wife happened to be doing the dishes and I was like, let me try this. And she is completely fine with this being shown on the, uh, the podcast here. But uh, this was the result of my first successful photo uh, grammetry or the first successful one that I was able to 3D print, I should say. Any thoughts there, Kirk? <laughs> um, it looks like uh, like aluminum foil, like Reynolds wrap and what? So you, your, your 3D printer made that? Yes. It, uh and so you basically you said you ba it sounded to me like the sh you were trying to take a picture of shoes but the shoes outsmarted you so essentially you couldn't yes. figure it out the shoe so you what did you went with your wife uh, let me let me say those are pants if that that gives you any any hints there those are okay so that's <laughs> your your wife's wait your wife's backside that's pretty your much wife's, yeah, yeah. yeah your 
at, out of all the attempts I tried to do to do the shoes, that's the one that worked. So we got an aluminum foil butt. Pretty much. What we got here. All right. So you just you use that to wrap rump roast is what you <laughs> use. <to. laughs> so I, I, I initially because I I heard rumblings. I heard rumblings. Somebody said you're gonna have a picture of uh, John's mm. wife's ass, and I was to be honest, John. I was expecting a picture of you. Because I thought you <laughs> were your wife's ass. If I could take my pictures of myself to do this with, I, I probably would have. That that would have been a much better better way of doing that. All right, John, I've, I've heard buns of steel, but this is ridiculous. Can I just say that? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> the other thing, and we were kind of talking about this last week, Chris, but uh, this is actually... Uh, not color change. It's a color gradient filament. And when I go to the next one here, nope, I hit the wrong button. Go to the next one here. This is the same filament, but you can see one of them is more like bronze and the other one's more silver. So your wife's been tanning. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> also, by the way, I did not, it looks like a nice rendering I just I don't see the uh, skull tattoo with the flame shooting out of it, which I assume <laughs> your wife has. So that that did and not close. show up. It was a good rendering, but that it, it missed that. So maybe next time. But the uh, okay. Me off. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, it's not like I've seen your. There's she doesn't have an account on TikTok where I've seen for sure, but I just assumed. <laughs> I just assumed, and you know what they seem to make an ass out of you, and well, never mind. That's bad. Anyway, I just kind of took a guess. Took a yeah. You know what's funny is she actually wanted me to put this up just to hear your reaction. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> That's an odd thing. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, can you talk about your uh, your friend's wife's ass? Uh, I could, but that sounds like a trap. It sounds <laughs> like a tra it sounds like I'm uh, up for a punching, basically. Well, it, I'm going to, okay. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. I mean, so John did this with pictures. It's all just separate pictures that you put into a program and it comes out with a 3D model and then he printed that 3D model. So it is pretty sweet. I mean, they've been doing it for a long time. I did a little research on this, which I didn't find much because I didn't know much about it. But uh, just the idea that you could take photographs and piece them together and make a 3D model out of it. That's kind of awesome. Yeah, I can't do that. Yeah. And this, 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 this I did a while ago when I first kind of got into it. I did another one today, just in reference of, I, can, I can't remember if it was in a stream or in one of Chris's streams or if it was in one of the podcasts, but we had a, a comment of, can you 3D print a piece of pizza? And oh, I did this today. <laughs> How cool is that? It is very hard to see, uh, mostly because I just used white filament because that's what I had loaded on the uh, the printer at the time. So I did get a, a a little bit better of a picture of just the pizza itself. How did it taste? Well, not great. the The pizza <laughs> itself was awesome, but. No, that's cool. It looks uh, looks like a piece of pizza. Uh, yeah, it's a little hard to see, like I said, because of the white. But you can definitely tell it's the same piece of pizza because look at the uh, look at the corners yeah. there. It's got the little crust piece on the end where you can see where it's broken yeah. out there. No, that's really cool. And you did that all with photographs. That's badass. I think it was twenty three pictures I took of it, and I was able to uh, model and composite the the pizza. So you're taking, you took several pictures of that piece of pizza. Yes. So you were a member of the Pizzerazzi. <laughs> come, hey, come on. Oh, that come on. Yeah. No, that, that, come on, Kirk. Hey, that was better than Chris's. <laughs> That's saying much, all right? But see, a lot of people, 
and this is where I probably kind of messed myself up. A lot of people, when they get into this hobby, they start, uh, start, you know, small and basic by taking pictures of tree trunks or rocks or, you know, stuff that is a lot easier because ideally you would take pictures as you're walking around the, the, the thing you want to model. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, I decided a shoe would be a good start for me. And probably because of the Missouri muddy shoes. <laughs> well, you know what? That was in the back of us. You know what? I like that answer. So and what kind of shoe was it? Just a, a tennis shoe boot? Like, what did you try to do? I was just uh, a tennis shoe. Okay. Now, the cool part is, is if you were to paint that print, like I did with Kirk's dog turd, uh, you would actually be able to pretty well see that that's a piece of pizza if you had all the colors correct. Oh, absolutely. And that's kind of what I'm planning to do. Um, like I said, I just, I was thinking about it while I was rendering the animation and my computer was kind of tied up. So I was like, what could I do? Figured, let's take a bunch of pictures of a piece of pizza and see what I can do with it. Um, and then I went from doing that to printing it off. I think I popped it off the printer like <clears throat> half an hour before, uh, b before the podcast started there. So to, if you actually uh, you you want to put color on that, you want um, 3D print on top of that. Would you actually just paint with actual like you're painting uh, something like ceramic or something like that? Yeah, yeah, I use on on mine, Kirk. I just use regular acrylic paint. It seems huh. to work just fine. Yeah, and I I've I use spray paint on the helmets I did for uh, for you, Chris. I mean, it doesn't take a lot. It's just plastic. So anything yeah. that you would use to, like, you could use modeling paint, which would probably work very well, but it's a little more expensive where you can go to Walmart and get some acrylic paint and it's like 50 cents a bottle. It's really cheap. Painted that. I bet uh, after Chris has had a couple beers, I bet if you gave that to him, he would eat that. <laughs> I, I would imagine so. Yeah. I think this pizza's a little stale. It's kind of tough. <laughs> I'm going to put it in the toaster oven for a little bit. That'll fix it. That'll be better. <laughs> I mean, put, that would make it, it softer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See? Win-win. <laughs> so I was looking, John, and I saw in the research that I was doing, because I didn't know anything about this, that they've been using this a long time to do maps with, like, topography. And then I also learned that it's used a lot in like sonar, radar, and LIDAR, which I'm interested in just because LIDAR can be used under the same concept of 3D modeling. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and LIDAR is, in fact, it's really good, but it's uh, in context of the um, LIDAR in phones and stuff to do uh photogrammetry like this it's good but it doesn't have the, the necessarily the same resolution uh because as you and this isn't even the best resolution as it is um because there's a lot of errors where if i had taken like 500 pictures it might have worked a whole lot better whereas lidar you just kind of point your the lidar at the the device or at the device at the the thing you want to take make a model of and just kind of move it around and the, the the radar does it all for you so how many how many pictures did you take of the pizza i think it was 23 23 to make this okay well and from what i can tell it's the same kind of concept as using the 3d scanner tool except the 3d scanner tool just pieces all that stuff together as it goes versus a picture you know, 23 pictures you have to put into a program and then have it output the model. Yes. And the scanners themselves, I think have, I think the scanners are the best resolution out of all of them, but I, I will admit, I don't know how they work, even though I really, really want one. Well, yeah, but they're, you know, hundreds to thousands of dollars and a camera. Everybody's got a camera. You take your pictures, boom, you got a 3d model. Not, yeah nothing wrong with that the the downside is 
I think the software is getting better to where you can use regular cell phones, but the pictures I took with the cell phone weren't nearly as good as when I used a uh, DSLR. What do you think the difference is? Uh, a standardized lens. Uh, so that's part of the problem is when you take a picture, every lens will distort the image a certain way. And if the software doesn't know how how the picture was distorted with the lens, it won't know how to correct for it. When you have a DSLR with a lens that's been used for, you know, 15 years, uh, you can the software can easily correct for it. Okay, so it's just... You know, like, let's say it doesn't have a filter on the lens. Well, it's it's not just filter. It's the lens distorts the image in a certain way, and every lens is different. And so does a DSLR not have a lens? Is that what that is? No, it has a lens. It's just that because these lenses are so, uh, are so much in use and so much is known about them, the, the way to correct them is in the computer software oh okay so like it's a fix for a 97 honda everybody knows how to do it because it's been around they've seen it they've done it yeah that's essentially yeah i think it's getting better with some cell phones like I, a lot of the videos i saw recently people were using their cell phones to do it and i had some success with mine it's just the, the DSLR made it much, much easier. 3D huh. printer, does 3D printer ever going to get so advanced where it's going to basically, you're going to, you're going to ask it to, to make a model of a piece of pizza and it's going to go, no, that's stupid. Like, is it ever, is it ever going to go, look, I can, I can create bones and fix people. And you're asking it to make uh, me to make a fake piece of pizza. No. I would hope not, because then I would have been able to make my fake piece of pizza tonight. The 3D printer eats it afterwards. I think it's okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, I think that's... That's all I really had to talk about with the uh, photogrammetry. I think we're ready for the uh, the Reddit stuff there, Chris. Or did we lose Discord again? Chris, are you still there? I'm here. I'm okay. There. All right, good. All okay. Right, good. <laughs> I was like, are, are we having another incident of episode two? <laughs> no, I'm here. We we promise never to talk about episode two ever again. Okay, come on, let's up up you know, up, you know forward and beyond. Let's go. So you know, what what have we chose for Reddit? Do we do we have a topic or subject or what, what's going Bef on with the before Reddit we today? go to Reddit? I was just curious, John. I I read in the uh, on the internet that there was some stuff going on with SpaceX this week. Oh yeah, do that's you... right. Um, so they were attempting to launch and land SN11 yesterday, and uh, they didn't exactly explain why, but it is now on hold till Monday. Okay, so Monday is when they're gonna attempt. Yeah, attempt it. But uh, they didn't. They didn't say why it was delayed. Uh, they usually don't, unless there's. I mean, they're they're under no pressure to release why it was delayed. It could have been a numerous amount of reasons. I did read that they don't normally shoot on the weekends just because they have to close down highways and stuff. So they probably could have shot off this weekend, except they just didn't want to shut down the highways. Yeah, I mean, potentially. They also have remember that picture of um the the big booster in the the tower yeah the heavy yeah they've uh moved it to I'm assume to a, I in what I assume is a preparedness to make the next booster the one that will actually carry a uh, starship huh 
Okay, so does that mean you think that they're getting ready to actually shoot one up? Well, I mean, they're definitely pushing hard to get their um, to get to orbit by what did I say last week? I think it was July. Might have been June. Not to read anybody's print, but April first is coming up pretty soon. This seems like a prime pranking opportunity for all these space people to announce that they did something really amazing. And then just go April Fools and just disappoint everybody. Well, that might be the case, but usually uh, a lot of people are very interested in space and watch stuff very closely. I mean, just look at SpaceX's uh, Boca Chica site. They've got probably dozen, two dozen cameras pointed at the, the facility at any given time. Yeah, they don't get a uh, moment's peace out there, that's for sure. No. And also, <clears throat> I just thought of it. I was going to tell you, and I don't remember if I sent you the article or not, but our buddies Icon, who we talked about with the 3D printed homes, they, uh, I think, partnered with NASA in our 3D printing launch pads now. Yeah, that would be incredible. I'm surprised. Honestly, I'm surprised SpaceX isn't trying to do that at at Boca Chica right now. But their pad is probably a little requires a little bit more um, sturdiness, considering that rocket is going to be like 150 meters in the air. Look, I'm not the brightest guy in the world, but like if it's a launch pad, and whenever I see a rocket, it just seems like incredibly hot flames are hitting the launch pad. Wouldn't anything but concrete i mean if it's made by 3d printer and it's more plasticky when it just melts well I, instantly icon remember kirk we talked about with the 3d houses and they use concrete as okay. their that, right, that makes more method. sense uh, sorry keep going yeah well and even concrete the the amount of thrust that the uh those rockets produce is ridiculous and uh, it's usually dampened both for sound and I'm assuming for protection of the pad with water uh, because it's those things are like ridiculous when they're taking off. And the uh, the oh, I'm forgetting the name. The heavy booster that they're using for the uh, space or starship is going to have. I can't remember. It used to be 42. They were going to put 42 engines on the bottom of it, but I know that number shrunk, and I, I can't remember it off the top of my head right now. 42 is a lot, though. Well, the, the Starship itself is going to have six, three ra or ground-level raptors and three space raptors. Raptors like dinosaurs from Jurassic Park? Essentially. Oh. <laughs> okay. They just run really fast, Kirk. They're smart. They can open doors. Yeah, they're they're really <laughs> frightening. Just well, by there's... the way, by the way, Jurassic Park. The, I forget which Jurassic Park it was, but the Jurassic Park that lost me was when Jeff Goldblum's daughter did a gymnastics flip and then kicked the one of the raptors, and that's how they. When I saw that, I'm like, all right, I'm leaving. She just <laughs> kicked a dinosaur in the face. I no, I can't take that. Sure, sure. So, there's a hundred more things that that brought up that I want to talk about, but I don't want to run too long. So, John, let's go over to the Reddit React. What do you got for us this week? Yeah, what are we? Yeah, what are we talking about? What's what's on the Reddit? I saw your pizza again. We already reacted to that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so. And I, and I was talking to Chris earlier about this, and um, it's just hard to find stuff on Reddit without curating through a bunch of it just due to politics and other random stuff. 3D printing seems to be safe, so we're going to stick with that until I figure out a, a better way of doing this. But uh, here is the, the first one. And for those audio listeners, it is a miniature... Working 3D printed washing machine. 
Wow, that's just what everybody <laughs> needs. Everybody's like, you know what? I enjoy doing laundry so much. I wish I could do it smaller and for no point. Yeah, my first question was why? Well, I mean, if you think about it, like miniature dollhouse stuff is ridiculously expensive because they want it detailed as possible. I mean, the guy's using tweezers to put the clothes inside of the washing machine. So this was Barbie's dream house uh, laundry room? Essentially, this is what that's yeah. For? Oh, it has a plug. I didn't see that before. I saw oh, he, the... He hooked it up wrong. He, the AC oh, and the AC are wrong. Oh, it moves. It actually works. Holy yeah. cow. Yeah. All right. You know what? I was not... In, I was unimpressed. The fact that I'm actually... I've switched to impressed. It actually moves. So was I. I only saw the first few seconds and I was like, oh, it's just a model. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the fact that it spins. I mean... I'd have to test how, you know, clean the clothes come out, but I'll give it a I'll give it a B so far. Where, does it still does it have the uh the lint lint screen too? You got to like clean out the little lint afterwards. That's that's that would be small. That'd be a tiny amount of lint. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, so this guy's taking it a little far. All right, what, what do we got here? <laughs> so, I remember this it was one that I was going to show you in episode two when it are the everything cut out, but this is kind of like an illusion. It's supposed to look like there's a ball under that, but it's just the outside. No, that's pretty cool. It's a. Uh, it looks like a ball underneath of a tablecloth, except for it's just a three D print that's hollow on the inside. And yeah. Uh, it is, I mean, just the fact that they were able to print that. I mean, I'm looking at it and I'm going, there had to be a lot of supports on that thing. Ah, Yeah, that's that's a lot of detail there. So that that is, it is impressive to make it look like there's a ball under a napkin, but there's no ball there. Yeah. I wouldn't, I, I don't know if there I mean, obviously, there were some supports, but I don't think that it's as much as you would think. Well, it's pretty cool. I mean, it. I don't know what it's useful for. I mean, other than it's just a show off of what your printer can do. But, you know, I'll, I'll buy it. And decoration. Yeah, it's got to be just decoration. Just a conversation thing. Like, oh, yeah, there's, well, there's a ball under there. <laughs> <laughs> you liar. All right. Chris will recognize this. Ah, there's a boat stuck sideways in the Suez Canal. <laughs> ah, topical. <laughs> the, <laughs> it, it's a big-ass benchy with a lot of little benchies around it, and it's turned sideways. The big one is. That's pretty funny just because it's topical. Uh, and the next one, I mean, it's practical, but it's a uh, it's a little holder for his uh, calipers. So functional, yeah, very functional. Just something to uh, something to hold your calipers. You know what that, everybody this needs. This is this is a family podcast. Can you guys say calipers? <laughs> sure. <laughs> The next one, Kirk might enjoy. All right, so we got it's. Is that an egg? Is yes. It, it's 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 so Easter's coming up. So this is to make a really fancy designer Easter egg. Yeah, it's essentially a combination of a three D printer and a pen. Well, that's that's what it is. But yeah. Is, is the egg real or is the egg 3D printed? I can't even tell. No, the egg's real. Egg's it's real. essentially okay. just drawing on it with whatever they, whatever design they want. <laughs> See, the, to me, this just seems like, you know, that the parents that uh, can't let their kids do anything. It's like, look, you're going to screw up. You can't even dye the Easter eggs right. Look, let me just use my damn 3D printer. It's going to be cooler than what you're going to do. 
it'll be more <laughs> like it's just it's it, it seems like it's taking all the fun away from the kids so the dad can make something that looks better i mean well when you when you spend a lot of money on a 3d printer you gotta use it <laughs> and kids kids can have joy later <laughs> 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 and don't eat all of that ink. Oh yeah, so yeah, so hold on. So if you put okay, so if this it's a real egg, but it's got 3D printed uh whatever you'd call it on it, could you uh like boil it like a soft boiled egg and then eat that? Or do you think would the, would that uh, basically is the 3D printer filament toxic? Well, that's a pen. Um, that's just a regular ink pen. Kirk. Oh, it's just a regular. Yeah, okay. I yeah. It was three, never mind. All right, never mind then. So I, I should not eat the filament from the 3D printer is what you're saying. Well, I, I mean, should stop doing that. Most of it's kind of made of corn, but I still probably wouldn't eat it. <laughs> All right. Ki- kind of made of corn isn't a ringing endorsement for edibles. <laughs> I will I will not do that. All uh, right. And then for the next one, uh, 3D printed Orca and Diver. Ah, it's like Shamu. Looks like, uh, you know, like a killer whale. That looks pretty cool. Again, a nice little functional, well, not functional, decorative piece. Yeah, not too bad. I mean, not sure what you would use it for, but it's got pretty good detail on it. Just tell in eight seconds that killer whale is just going to turn to the right and just totally eat that scuba diver. Well, <laughs> random fact just popped into my head that humans have never been attacked by orcas in the wild. I think. Uh, did you ever see Jaws 2? Did you? I was going to say, Jaws is about a shark, isn't it? But no, I haven't seen 2. Well, what they there was a killer whale that got attacked. So the supposedly Jaws killed the killer whale. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but the killer whale didn't I was, attack a human. I was going to say, yeah. The... I was just saying, uh, well, you know, maybe they, the killer whale was going to attack. It was in the middle of attacking a human, and the shark went, hey, that's my beat. And then he, that's why he attacked the killer whale and then attacked the human. Just, I don't want to cite Jaws 2 uh, for a thesis, but... <laughs> <laughs> Got a little derailed there, I feel. Just a little. Possibly. A little off topic. Uh, let's see. This one's... I don't know if this one's similar to the one from earlier. I think like it a, is. a windmill? What, oh. there's a, what is that? Another egg. Oh, it's... Yeah, I'm not... Not 100% sure what it's doing there. I'm assuming it's painting it, possibly printing on it. Oh, it's an egg painting lathe, so it looks like it it paints on it as it spins it. Yeah. Oh, probably with the uh, like a stamp underneath. Possibly. I'm all for Easter, but I don't know about these 3D printed egg things. Yeah. Have you ever seen one of these, Chris? One, it, yeah, one of these crazy maze things maze locks boxes yeah yeah i've got one that looks like a dragon floating around here somewhere i think uh there is always one solution for these and that is a hammer (laughs) and for a cough drop (laughs) i'm so sick oh why did i print this stupid maze Right. Well, you know, to be honest, a hammer is your answer for a lot of things, Chris. Probably too many. I'll be honest <laughs> with you. But Kirk, it's 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 Chris. It's time to do your taxes. Put the hammer down. <laughs> but I like my hammer. That, that it's not a deductible. Please. It doesn't. Don't question my methods, Kirk. All right. Yeah, you, you got a return last year, so I stand <laughs> by the results. Let's see. Ooh, a hex bug. Yeah, this is... Um, they. It looks like they printed some extra accessories to add on to it.
It's a little like a uh, crawly robot thing, and it's got like a turret cannon on it. I'm assuming they 3D printed that. Yeah, sort of like a bit of a crab. A crab with like, yeah, like a, a flamethrower possibly for a nose. <laughs> I feel like that's what would be the first thing you'd encounter on Mars and be like, ah, I should have stayed home. Well, or, you know, hey, surf and or, turf. Yeah. Could be crack. You never know. Could it be? Could be delicious. Yeah, until it flamethrowers your face. I was gonna say, yeah, the the flamethrower throws a little bit of a, a, a wrench into the works. Ah, you guys always rain on my parade. <laughs> Flaming throwing on your parade. I think under that one. Well, I think with that, we're actually running a little bit long, so I think we should probably uh, wrap up the Reddit React. I, I, It was okay, but there was a lot of egg talk this week. and Yeah, just a few. You know. Yeah, jo whenever Jaws 2 is brought up, out of it's kind of... Uh, it's probably not technological uh, interesting <laughs> for science people. <laughs> Although we were kicking around the idea of talking about movies, so that, you know did kind of fit into the, uh, the the theme that we were going to go with tonight. Yeah, we're, we're kind of, uh, we follow the two birds with one stone thing a lot. So, well, everybody, thanks for uh, tuning in this week, episode four. We are uh, very happy for everybody who's shown up, and uh, hopefully we will continue to get better. Hopefully everybody liked our intro music, and... We do have some outro music just I, for your listening pleasure. Oh, wait, maybe I not. was going to say, I got that just seconds before uh, we started. So it is not on this one. The outro ending stuff is just going to be the sci-fi from that was playing on the intro. It's a good cliffhanger, though, for next week. Yes. If you, really, if, if you like that intro music, then aren't you going to want to wonder here what next week's outro music is going to sound like? And uh, if it's anything like the Kirk Buckout, it will be better. <laughs> well, and look, what and what what video game are you gonna, guys going to be playing? What, what's after the the uh, the podcast uh, for you guys to be uh, drunkenly playing and chiming in? We're going to attempt to play Halo again. I hey, think well. we got all the bugs figured out this week. We say that, and then it doesn't happen. But we will be on a co-op stream, hopefully within you know 10 15 minutes something like that and uh it'll be me and john and we'll be on the discord so possibly kirk will i will try to smart ass sniper them to see what they're what they're doing with that everybody uh i'm chris we got john and kirk and uh thanks for hanging out and we will see you next week yeah have a good rest of your night adios <laughs>